There is no way around it. This summer has been a scorcher. Global record temperatures, and I am feeling it. Miserable. We've had days with a heat index over 116 Fahrenheit. Most days are over 100. And I think we are pipsqueaks compared to some of the other parts of the country. I'm seeing 117, 130. That's just crazy. I do my best to adapt in late July and most of August. When I do ride a bike outside, it's usually an e-bike, and then it's early in the morning. Even then, I'm waking up to 80 degree days. Not fun, so I lean a lot on scooters. Some people say e-bikes are replacing scooters, and I can see the argument in select circumstances, but also think there's a problem for e-bikes in extreme weather, and one I don't think gets talked about enough, and that has to do with batteries. Weather affects the performance of batteries, especially when we're talking about e-bike batteries. Let me say here, these are e-bike batteries that I had access to. I'm not calling out any brand. This is across the board. It's just the way e-bike batteries work, or at least work, when you're dealing with extreme temperatures. Because you see, an e-bike uses a lithium-ion battery. Lithium-ion, they're great. Lots of power relative to their weight. They're long-lasting and they're formable. You can squeeze a lithium-ion battery into a bike top tube. Over the past few years, I've really been enjoying all the electrical power they provide reviewing and riding e-bikes. All great, until I start thinking about the weather temps getting hotter and hotter. What effect does that have on e-bike batteries? Especially when I start thinking about weather and e-bike batteries and, well, it just laid a lot of praise on the lithium-ion battery, but there are also compromises. For instance, to get the longest life, we're told to charge them between 20 and 80%. So great. Now to get my battery to last, I need to lose roughly 40% of its capacity. And that's capacity that, you know, already manufacturers kind of exaggerate with their range claims. E-bikes, electric cars, whatever. A lot of claims, and those are under ideal circumstances to begin with. Even if we get a full charge every time, weather does have an effect. Cold really saps output. Hot, extreme hot, that causes problems too. I found that just about every e-bike manufacturer has a mention of it on their website. I'm only going to use the Schwinn website for this video because I feel it's a perfect amalgam of the info that's out there. Actually, they might be ahead of the curve by openly talking about this. They have a full page dedicated to it. And they don't sugarcoat it. They get right to statements like this one. The ideal temp range for an e-bike battery to work at peak efficiency is between 60 and 80 degrees. For me, that's about three weeks out of the year. That's not much of an exaggeration. So 60 to 80 degrees for peak performance. Then they mentioned that battery performance can deteriorate below 40 degrees and above 110 degrees. I've seen other websites that say above 100. I'm serious, they don't sugarcoat it. Look at this. When it's above 100 degrees, it's a good idea to stay off the bike altogether. Above 100 degrees is the bulk of my summer thus far. Looking at this from another angle, and this is a problem source that I only saw mentioned on the Schwinn website, but it's very valid. Even if you store your bike covered, temps in an unair-conditioned shed can be warmer than the temps outside, basically creating an oven, which is going to come back around to us here in just a minute. They suggest moving your bike out of a hot storage location and letting it cool outside before you ride it. Again, that would be for me still above 100 degrees most of the summer. And the sun's heat adds to that. Schwinn mentions that too. Metals, particularly black, can absorb heat from the sun, greatly increasing temps. And this is where things get interesting. Because when I ride in southern sunshine, there's no escaping it. When out on a bike, many streets don't have trees hanging over them, especially streets with bike lanes. People that commute, they're usually out in the open. If you have to park your bike, it's usually going to be in a bike rack. Those are uncovered in the sunshine. So practically anything parked in them gets the full effect of the sun. That's going to drive up temps. What I mean by that is the radiating effect of the heat. Have you ever burned your hand on a hot car or even on a metal bike? Imagine what the poor e-bike battery has to endure sitting out in the sun all day. I'm going to make another disclaimer here. I'm about to test something and that happens to be on electric XP because that's what I had closest access to. This could be on any e-bike. I also want to mention that Electric has a blurb about being in Phoenix, so they're used to heat. So don't take what you're about to see as being Electric specific. 
This is about all e-bikes, all e-bikes with lithium-ion batteries. Notes to carry over from what we've already seen. E-bike batteries work best between 60 and 80 degrees. Performance losses start at 110 on some sites, say as low as 100. Today, a 93 degree day, well cooler than what I've been experiencing, but a good benchmark because this is what I have to work with. I took an e-bike out of my air-conditioned bike barn, which is cooled to 79 degrees. The bike itself, 78.4 degrees, so my barn AC is doing its job. And to give you an idea of what we're in for, this is one minute later. Sitting exposed to the sun, 87 degrees in one minute. And climbing fast. After only 15 minutes, look at this. This is crazy. Almost 105 degrees. 105! on a 93 degree day and a day that's overcast. The sun's only peeking out unobstructed for a few seconds here or there and 105 degrees after 15 minutes. That's just the surface. On this bike and many e-bikes, most e-bikes, the battery is recessed into the frame. What happens if I check the internal temperature right here where the battery would be? Cooler since it's out of the sun, right? No, actually warmer, 109.5. Basically 110 degrees, right at that degradation point on the Schwinn website, so effectively an oven here. Again, this is on a day that's only 93 degrees and overcast. I have a friend out west, I had them test their e-bike in the sun. It was 130 degrees at the battery. It's amazing to see what the sun's heat can do and how aluminum will radiate that heat. It's warmer inside than it is on the outside. I hope you're getting the picture of what I'm trying to relay here. Even on an overcast day that by Alabama standards in July is not all that bad, for an e-bike, it's bad. I definitely want to protect me. I also want to protect my e-bike battery. So in the summer, in heat like this, I only ride bikes and e-bike early in the morning. The rest of my two-wheel fix comes via the scooter. Which adds an interesting twist to the saga. On the same day, in the same sun, my scooter's black plastic body panels equally baking. That's warm. Interestingly though, the internal temps, the backside of that plastic, considerably cooler. By 13 degrees. And that made me start thinking. If a metal e-bike frame becomes an oven for an internally housed battery, and my scooter internals are considerably cooler than the outside, not an oven. Couldn't an e-bike manufacturer make a plastic shell to cover the battery area on their frame, thereby reducing the temps directly at the battery? If it works like it does on my scooter 13 degrees, that could be the difference between degraded performance and a potential damaged battery. Plastic might go from that to a battery being in an acceptable operating temperature range. Even on hot days in direct sunlight, just a plastic shell. Now look, I'm no engineer, I'm not a battery specialist or anything other than just some moron that enjoys bikes and riding around on two wheels. Sometimes three, but I think I might be onto something here. What do you think? Do you have any expertise in this area? Do you think I'm making much ado about nothing over worrying? Based on what I've read, I don't think so. What do you think? Comment below. Thanks for watching Kev Central. Subscribe, thumbs up, notification bell, and all that. Have a great day.